In this video, we're in Microsoft Word, and I want to show you how to include a background image in your Word document. There's quite a few ways you can do this. I'm going to show you two ways that I think are the best. And to start off with, we'll go to the Design tab on our ribbon. And over on the right-hand side here, there's a Watermark button. If we click on that, we can go to Custom Watermark. And here you'll see there's an option for Picture Watermark. So I'm going to click on Select Picture, and you'll get a number of options for choosing a picture. I'm going to pick something from my desktop. Now you have a scale option here, which we'll come back to, and a washout option, which we'll come back to. For now, I'll just click on OK. You can see what it does. It's very faint, but there's a washed out image in the background of this document. Now that's probably not what you're after. So how do we make it fill up the whole page, for example? Well, Go back to Watermark, Custom Watermark. If you want to scale the image, you can use this drop down here. For example, if I scaled it to 100%, and now I'm just going to untick Washout so we can see this more clearly. You can see the picture now in the background of my document, and it in fact repeats on every page. But it doesn't quite fill up the whole page. So if I go back to Watermark, custom watermark, you can see that I have scales at 50% increments. So if I choose 150%, that will mean the image takes up the whole page. Now the crop is kind of chosen for you when you use that scaling drop down menu. If you want to reposition the picture in the background of your document, it's nice and easy. We need to do is go into the header and footer section of your document. To do that, just double click somewhere at the top of one of the pages. That takes you into the header element. Now the picture is in fact in the header. Now if you click on that image, you'll see that you get a picture format tab on your ribbon that shows you that you've picked the image. And then what you can do is you can drag the image around the background of your page. Maybe I want to see these climbers in the background of the page. So once you've got it right, you can then click on close header and footer and the document's kind of ready to go. You can make other changes to the image once you're in the headers and the footers. I go back into the header, click on the image. I get my page format tab on my ribbon. Over on the left here, you've got various control options for the brightness for the washout settings of the image. So if I chose washout here, you can see that it washes out the image in the background of my document. I'll undo that. The other thing you could do is make it grayscale. So you've got loads and loads of options there for controlling how your image actually appears in the background of your document. The other thing you can do is resize the image. So I know, for example, that an A4 page has a height of 29.7 centimeters. So I'm gonna change this image to fit the background exactly, 29.7. So now with it resized, I might need to move it a little bit. So it's all right at the top here, but at the bottom I've got some white space. So I'll drag the image down the bottom of the page and it should fit the page exactly but I can see a lot more of the image in the background of my document. Okay, so that's really the first method of showing an image in the background of your document. Let's move on to the second method. So I've got exactly the same document. What we're gonna do with this method is go straight into the headers and footers. So it doesn't matter which tab you're on at the top here, I'm just gonna double click the top of my document. That takes me into the header. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Insert, Picture, and then from this device, and choose my image. So there's the image that I want to appear in the background of my document. Your first step would be to go to this Wrap button, and you want to wrap it behind text. That's this button here. Then with the image still selected, you can change its size. So up on the Picture Format tab, I'm going to change the image size again to 
29.7 in terms of its height. Then I can just move the image to wherever I want it to be on the page. And it should fit the page exactly. Now using this method, you actually get a few more options in terms of how the image looks. Some of these options weren't available when we used the previous method. So if I went to corrections, because I can do all sorts of artistic things with the background image. If I go to color, I could change it to grayscale, or I could apply a tint to the image. Artistic effects. Hours of fun using these options. Transparency, so you can apply a washout at different levels here. So there's a lot more flexibility. Now using this method, the image will also repeat on every page of your document. Now I want to look next at a scenario where you only want the image to appear on the background of the first page in the document. So it's almost the same as our previous method, but with a slight tweak. Same document as before. I'm going to double click in the header. That opens up the header and footer tab on my ribbon. And what you're going to do is tick this option here, different first page. And that creates what's called a first page header on the first page of your document. So everything you insert in this header will only appear on the first page of your document. So insert picture, this device. Pick your picture, insert, change the wrap option, change the size if necessary, reposition, and then if I close the header and footer, you'll see that the image appears on the first page, but not on subsequent pages. Next scenario, I have a three page document and I want a different background picture on each page. Now this is slightly more involved. What we need to do is create section breaks in our document. Now when you create different sections in your document, you can have different page level formats and headers and footers are page level formats. So by default, there is one section in your document and it's worthwhile if you're doing this, just showing which section you're in on the status bar of Word. Now to do that, right click down on the status bar and select this option here, section. So you can see at the moment I'm in section one and wherever I click in my document, I'm in section one. The document only has one section. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click at the top of page two and I want this to be in a different section to page one. Now to insert a section break, you go to layout, breaks, next page, section break. So now if you look down on the status bar, this is in section two, and then I'm gonna create a third section for page three, layout tab breaks, next page. So this is in section three. I've got three sections in my document. Now, if I go to the header and footer on page one, I can see it says header section one, and then on the second page, it says header section two. Now, what I want to do is unlink this section from the section above. I'm on the header and footer tab, and you can see it says link to previous. Now that is selected at the moment, and to confirm that, it says same as previous over here. If I click on this button, it actually turns it off, and same as previous disappears from over here. Now, I also want to unlink the section three header from the section two header. So I do the same thing. Clicked into the header for section three and I unlink it from the previous section. Right, now I have independent headers. So I'm going to insert the picture in the section one header. the necessary resizing. And repositioning. 
but you can see it hasn't inserted anything on page two. So I go to page two, insert picture, and I'll choose a different picture. Change the size again. Resize it, reposition it. And I can do exactly the same for section three. Resize. Reposition. And then I'll just come out of the header and footer. Now I have a document with three different background pictures. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.